So yeah, this work is with Jane Waite at Queen Mary and also Carl Matten of the University of Sydney. Um, so the background to this is basically computing is being taught in schools worldwide, but there's been very little experience of actually uh, the best ways to teach in schools at least. Obviously it's been taught at university for a lot longer, um, but little experience of solid pedagogy. So what we need are some simple tools to help judge the effectiveness of learning activities and help us work out how to improve activities. My particular interest has been for a long time in Unplugged. I teach at university level and in schools using Unplugged activities an awful lot. And when I came across Semantic Waves, it just seemed like a really, really good fit to the kind of things I was doing and gives us a really good explanatory tool. One of the things about Unplugged teaching is it's very easy to um, do an Unplugged activity with a class and it not really work at all. and it, and only small tweaks can make it either better, an activity better or worse. And one of the things that I've found with this theory is it actually helps um, you actually work out what those tweaks need to be and what it might be that you, you could just make a small change and would make things a lot better. So what is it? It's part of an educational theory called legitimation code theory by Carl Matten dating back to 2013. Um, and what it's really about is a simple but powerful theory of how to teach concepts. So I'm going to talk about it in the concept, on the context of teaching um, computer science and in particular looking at unplugged activities and teaching programming. But it's been successfully applied across many, many disciplines. Um, so, you know, everything from chemistry to journalism. And so there's a big literature out there about its use across different disciplines, but it, there doesn't seem to have been very much, if any, um, application of it to computer science. There's been some work on, on IT related things. Um, so what it is, is a way to think about what makes a good explanation or learning experience, whether that's a written explanation, multimedia, um, an online talk like this, spoken, a live lecture, and you can analyze um, talks and activities based on the sort of written uh, plan of what you're going to do, but also you can do it applying it to actual live experiences as they happen. Um, so it may be your plan kind of is all fine, but when you actually give the, the workshop the talk, then you actually do something slightly different and you could kind of even look at the differences there. So it's actually a way to think about things like why things like metaphors and unplugged teaching works. But as I said, it, it's not just about that. So actually only yesterday I was using it with MSc students to try and help them understand what I want in exam questions when they write explanations and what I mean by a good written explanation to an exam question. Um, so it's very flexible. It's also very simple. So you can use it to evaluate activities and it helps you point you at improvements. So to be a little bit more concrete about what I mean by a semantic wave and what makes good explanation, basically you can take a learning activity or the plan of a learning activity and follow on, um, plan, plan what its profile is over time. So over time, what you're trying to do is take abstract concepts and technical language. That's what we're trying to explain and take a, a, a learner on a journey where they start out at a no, as a novice, not really understanding these concepts. That's what we're trying to explain to them. And by the end of the journey, they actually do understand it. And this is basically learning a subject is about mastery. It's about mastery of both the language and the concepts and also the skills that go with them. And so how do you tra transfer somebody from being a novice over to being a mas master? Well, one way of doing it would be just give them technical explanations with technical concepts. And that would, in this theory, it suggests is not a good thing because you're working completely up in this abstract, up in the clouds level. And if the students don't actually understand the words and haven't mastered the concepts, then that's not going to help them. So what you do instead is you link it 
these concepts and this technical language in terms of things that people are familiar with. Um, so you can do that with diagrams, examples, metaphors, similes, unplugged activities. And you can think of this as it's like a, you're linking it to things that people can understand. So this is where you've moved down into the concrete world and, of concrete examples and you're using everyday language and these are things that the reader already knows well and can understand now if the whole session was down at this level again the student doesn't really learn anything because they're just learning about things they already know or things like recipes perhaps if you're using a recipe metaphor it's the linking down and linking back up that actually helps students understand the concepts and it's all about them unpacking the concepts as they go down but then repacking as they go back up and linking things back again and one of the things i think goes wrong with unplugged teaching is it's very easy to spend all your time down at this low level in the unplugged activity but never really manage to link it up to the actual technical concepts that you're interested in and there's also a distinction between whether you're making the links or the student is so a good learning experience or a good explanation according to this theory is you start by introducing the abstract concepts in the technical language you say you what, what you're going to learn about and then you explain it in terms of concrete things you link it to things that it's linked to but then having worked down in this concrete level you then repack everything and you, ideally it's not you doing the repacking it's the students doing the repacking but you link those things back to the abstract ideas and this is a simplified version of, of an activity um, my feeling really is good at learning activities are not just a single wave they're actually lots of waves between between waves waves linking on to the to the next wave. The theory does sort of say something about what bad experience would, would be. So a down escalator where you go down and leave people at the bottom and never repack isn't going to be a good explanation. Uh, if you're just working flatlining at the top all in abstract technical language, that's not a good experience. If you're flatlining down at the bottom, that's not going to make a good experience either. So what we did is took this theory and start to think about it, applying it to actual um, activities that are computer science related activities so that, as I say this has been done before with all sorts of other activities but this idea of unplugged fits this idea really well and all of my teaching is kind of full of metaphors and unplugged activities and turning things into tangible things that people can see and so I wanted to find out whether my hunch that um, this sort of theory actually does really sort of show why that might be working or not so we took to start off with two activities one um, a really popular activity I've used at universities and with teacher CPD and with students um, that's basically just an explanation of, about concepts in programming about how variables and sequences of assignments work and that's an unplugged activity and over I've been doing this over 20 years and it's been very effective I get lots of good feedback about it and it certainly seems in terms of results to help students and then as a contrast I took a copy code activity so one where essentially you give code for people to people um, to copy out and they write it out and run the program and this if you do it in an extreme way is suggested as a really ineffective way to teach programming and certainly I have you know I don't believe that is a good way to teach programming and what we also did is in several CPD sessions I've done I've asked teachers and I've done this as well with some students ask them to draw wave structures of activities while they happen so I've given one of these activities and then asked them to draw the the waves to see if teachers after just a brief explanation would be able to actually draw the sort of waves and spot what the structure of the uh, lesson was so what we did we find well basically as a summary the unplugged activity the box variable activity had a really good wave within wave structure that unpacked and repacked concepts repeatedly so it does seem to suggest in terms of this theory that the structure of the unplugged activity does seem to work the co copy code activity 
had a cup pour more like well a down escalator but a flatlining down escalator with just repeated flatline sort of structures um, in both cases though, one of the interesting things I think is just thinking about the wave structure suggests improvements and this box variable activity I've been doing this as I say for 20 odd years and actually drawing the semantic wave I immediately saw that there was a way I could actually improve the structure of the activity even though it is this wave within wave structure there's a way you could actually improve it so to give you a more concrete version of what I mean by that so here's a version uh, of, of the semantic wave of this box variable activity so I'll give a brief overview as I go through the wave of what it actually involves doing um, so again we're starting at, with abstract concepts and technical language so initially I start by explaining the learning outcome that we're going to learn about variables and sequences of assignments and that's in technical language that's telling people what they're going to learn about but they don't understand the words at the moment we then basically go into a, um, a an unplugged activity where I get volunteers out and I explain that what we're going to do is see how variables work but you've got to think of variables as being like a, a box but actually they're more than a box they're like a box that's got an integrated shredder in it so think Banksy's artwork at the recent auction if you saw that that things inside the box can get shredded um, but also with a copier and th that's an important addition to the metaphor to actually make it work for the kind of things that I'm trying to teach you can use a simpler box metaphor but anyway so then what we've just done is drop down a curve and now we're in the world of concrete things in everyday language I'm talking about boxes shredders and copiers and I've actually got volunteers there up front that are holding boxes and we've got a, a visual thing then what I do is introduce a small program which is just a swap program to swap the values in some variables around this point we're going back into more technical language again um, so we're going back up a curve and I'm linking that and saying something about how we, we will now look at the, the, how this works with a shredder and copy a version of the boxes um, so we introduce the role play and explain how it's going to work and then work through that program line by line so it's a six line program and so with each line we look at the line of code and then we act it out. People holding boxes and values moving around, pieces of paper being copied and shredded and um, placed in and out of boxes. And we do that for the first instruction. That is sort of going from the down into um, the everyday table version of it. And then we go to the next instruction. So it is actually for each instruction, we're doing a wave, which is an explanation of each instruction in turn, going from the A and back up to the program and then back down again. So it's a series of waves like this, as we explain each line of code. And then as we go back to the end, then what I was past is I then overview the points about what we've learned about variables as we've been going through this I've been pointing out things about variables such as you can only have one thing stored in one of these boxes at a time only one value is stored in a variable at a time and so on and linking that to the box shredder copier metaphor um, and then I overview these in terms of now the abstract concepts in the technical language and when I drew the first version of this curve, what I immediately realized is this is a really steep climb back up again. I'm going straight back into the abstract concept and technical language, but I'm doing the repacking. So it's good that I'm doing the packing. And the whole of this structure at a more granular level is a semantic wave, just with waves within it. But I could go more slowly in the repacking. And so what I realized is, for example, if I gave a activity at this point where I get the students to summarize exactly what I'm about to summarize how much can they come up with what points can they say that are important then get a much better activity Paul we've got about a minute left so this is okay so that's showing that activity if we go to a copy code activities so they'll explain the task here's a program um, 
and it's about a sequence of assignments or a sequence of drawing instructions is the one I looked at. You then type in the examples. At this point, you're flatlining. You've dropped a little bit because it's a bit more concrete, but it's still in very technical language. And then when you finally finish typing it all, you run it and now you're in the real world and see a picture. But there's no real linkage between these if you do this in an extreme way. Um, and there's no repacking, again, in an extreme way. But looking at this extreme version, again, can suggest things you can do to improve matters. Um, and so obviously the first thing that you would do here is you you need an up es an up escalator you need to repack and you need to get the students repacking but also activities here so for example just doing something like a dry run first where they're actually acting out and working out what it does would make a difference of actually making the, a slower kind of repack so the conclusions of this basically semantic waves provide a quick and simple but powerful way to evaluate learning activities you are basically just sketching a curve it's very quick and easy to do you can do it as it's happening you can go to more or less detail um, and it gives insight into why those activities may or may not work as well as it reflecting so supporting reflective changing that might changes that might improve the activities where it would be good to tweak things to make things better and we certainly found that teachers and students that i've tried this with have been able to plot wave structures of activities while watching them and point out the problems um, places and start to suggest what you would do differently so with the copy code activity what you start to do is head towards something like prim as a way of um, seeing a better way of doing that kind of activity. So I will skip the references, they're all in the paper and a fuller version of it. If anybody's got any questions, that's fine. And my email address is there.